Welcome to a video on the sum and difference identities for cosine and the goals of the video are to use these identities to determine function values. So if we have the cosine of a sum or difference, here are the identities. The cosine of the quantity a plus b is equal to cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. And if we have a difference, it's equal to cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. Now instead of writing this as two different identities, sometimes it's written like this. And notice here we have a plus or minus sign, and over here we have a minus plus sign. So if we use the addition sign here, we would use the subtraction sign. And if we use the subtraction sign here, then we would use the addition sign here. Now I am including a slide that shows the proof of these identities. This proof is pretty straightforward if you set up this diagram using the instructions here and then follow the proof here on the left. So you may want to pause the video and take a look at this to see where these identities do come from. But let's go ahead and take a look at a couple problems using the identities. Here's a problem where we have sine a is 12 thirteenths in the second quadrant and sine b is equal to 4 fifths in the first quadrant. We want to find the cosine of the quantity a plus b. So let's go ahead and write out our identity. Notice if we have a sum, then we're going to use a difference of these two products. We are given sine a and sine b, but we still have to find cosine a and cosine b. So let's go ahead and sketch these angles in standard position. For angle a in the second quadrant, it might look something like this, where our reference angle, or a prime, would be this angle here. And so the opposite over adjacent side would be 12 over 13. And this is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle, so this side would be labeled negative 5 since we are in the second quadrant. For angle B, in the first quadrant has a sine of 4 fifths. So if we call it angle B, this would be the opposite side, this would be the hypotenuse, and this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so this side here would have length 3. So we'll use this information to complete our identity. So the cosine of angle A would be the cosine of this reference angle, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, or negative 5 thirteenths. Times the cosine of angle B, well the cosine of angle B would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or 3 fifths, minus sine A times sine B. Well sine A is given as 12 thirteenths and sine b is given as 4 fifths. This product would be negative 15 over 65 plus negative 48 over 65, which gives us negative 63 60 fifths for the cosine of angle A plus B. And this is what we were trying to find, so let's go ahead and state it one more time. Cosine of A plus B is equal to negative 63 60 fifths. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more problems. Here we want to determine the exact value of cosine 15 degrees. Well, 15 degrees is not one of those nice reference angles, but we can use a sum or difference of two angles that would be reference angles to obtain an angle that would be equal to 15 degrees. So for example, if we use the reference angle of 45 degrees and then we subtracted the reference angle of 3 degrees, that would give us an angle of 15 degrees. So we can use angle A equal to 45 degrees and angle B equal to 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and set this up down here. We'll have the cosine of 45 degrees minus 3 degrees is equal to cosine A cosine B cosine 45 degrees times cosine 30 degrees. Now we use the subtraction sign here, so we'll use an addition sign. And then it's going to be sine A times sine B or the sine of 45 degrees times the sine of 3 degrees. Now we're going to fill in these values, find these products, and then find the sum. We'll go ahead and replace this now with 15 degrees. And I included the unit circle here. The cosine of 45 degrees, remember, is equal to the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So we have square root 2 over 2 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, here's 30 degrees. So our x-coordinate is square root 3 over 2 
plus sine of 45 degrees is also square root 2 over 2. And the sine of 30 would be equal to the y-coordinate, or 1 half. So here we have square root 6 over 4 plus square root 2 over 4. So now we know the cosine of 15 degrees is exactly equal to the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 divided by 4. Now we can check this on our graphing calculators uh, in decimal form. Let's go ahead and do that. First, let's check to make sure we're in degree mode. Press Enter. Go back to the home screen. And we'll type in cosine 15 degrees. And then we'll compare this to what we found to be the exact value. And this verifies our work. Okay, here's another one, same idea, but now it's in radians. So sometimes it's difficult to determine which reference angles we can add and subtract to come up with this angle in radians. So let's go ahead and convert this to degrees first. This is equal to 105 degrees. So that should tell us if we use a 60 degree angle and we add a 45 degree angle, that would give us 105 degrees. But let's go ahead and be consistent and use radians. So 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 radians. And 45 degrees is equal to pi over 4 radians. What this tells us is that cosine of 7 pi over 12 is equal to the cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And these are the angles we'll use in our identity. So again, we have cosine A times cosine B. Here we're using a sum, which means we'll use a difference in our identity. And then the sine of A times the sine of B. Cosine of pi over 3 radians. Here's pi over 3 radians. So that's equal to the x coordinate, or 1 half. The cosine of pi over 4 radians is equal to square root 2 over 2. The sine of pi over 3 radians would be square root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 radians would be square root 2 over 2. Notice we have a common denominator of 4. So what we have found is that the cosine of 7 pi over 12 radians is equal to, again, our denominator is 4. And our numerator would be square root 2 minus square root 6. OK, I think I have one more question if we have time. Here we want to find the exact value of cosine 40 times cosine 50 minus sine 40 times sine 50. And what we should notice here is that it fits our identity when we're using a difference. So we're going to rewrite this in this form this time. And if we're using a subtraction sign here, we're going to find the sum of angle A and angle B, which are 40 degrees and 50 degrees. So this would be equal to the cosine of 40 degrees plus 50 degrees, which is equal to 90 degrees. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees, here we are in the unit circle. Remember, cosine is equal to x, so this is equal to 0. And that's all there is to this problem. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.